So we've come into your lab to test out the Victorian depilatory recipe of our dreams. Is that something that we can do here? Yes. Of course. Oh, that is some crunchy hair. This one is um, feeling a little bit prickly. Yeah, your local Victorian apothecary is not doing this. <laughs> On the one hand, I too get annoyed every time I see a period drama featuring legs and armpits shaven to delicate 21st century sensibilities. But on the other hand, historical evidence does show that body hair removal has been around for millennia. And that by the 19th century, there were a wide variety of methods for maintaining unwanted hair. Although preferences for what sorts of hair in which places shifts according to the whims of contemporary beauty standards. Nowhere in my subsequent rabbit hole of body hair removal methods did I see any mention of these methods being used on legs. Long skirts did a great job of hiding the legs, which leads me to believe that if this was ever done, it was rare. The main areas we want to focus on are the face and the arms, since these are the areas that will be exposed. Now, we have a couple of different ways that we could go about this, if we were the sort of woman who wishes to engage in depilatory practices. The first is obviously shaving, although as many of us know, the hair is pretty quick to grow back and can appear stubbly in between shaves. The second is an early form of electrolysis, which has been around since at least the early 1860s, although still quite painful and very laborious. Also, of course, there are the conventional methods of tweezing out unwanted hairs, abrasively rubbing off the hair with a pumice, or singeing off your unwanted hairs by candle flame. Finally, we have depilatory creams, or caustic solutions which burn or dissolve the hair down to the skin. Think Nair, but with a lot more burning. So it turns out when you find a body hair removal recipe in a cosmetics manual written in 1905 and the author describes it as the least poisonous formulation, your optimistic ass might think, great, that sounds like something I can try at home. Our recipe from 1905 is a deceptively simple concoction requiring only zinc oxide, some powdered starch for thickening, and strontium sulfide as the active ingredient. Starch is just any plain wheat, potato, or rice starch. Zinc oxide was easy enough to find. It is still used in sunscreens and skincare products today. And strontium sulfide can still be found in some depilatory patents from the 21st century. So, in theory, this should be fairly safe to recreate, right? I got in touch with an old chemist friend who just so happened to have done a bunch of work on strontium and could give a preliminary opinion on safety and to engage in the thought exercises of how the Victorians may have been concocting strontium sulfide, which, by the way, is a thing you should never do unless you don't mind ending up married to a chemist and down a 19th century strontium mine. The bigger question for you is the purity of strontium sulfide that you would pick up from the chemist on the corner store and bring home to make this concoction yourself. How much of your bottle is actually strontium sulfide and how much is other mystery stuff? If you're using something less pure than they were, your mixture isn't going to be potent enough and you may not see the same amount of hair removal effects that they did. And similarly, it works in reverse. If you use a more pure strontium sulfide, you may have more collateral skin damage than they intended. You are mixing a concoction of four grams of the stuff one time. I'm fishing for things to be concerned about at the scale of the experiment you're performing. With the professional tentative go ahead, it was time to get the ingredients. The strontium sulfide would have to be special ordered from a chemical supplier. And here is where things get complicated. The big suppliers to the UK systematically required scientific institutional affiliation, which I don't have. I found a couple of American suppliers who were willing to sell to me, but not to ship internationally. So basically ran into a lot of dead ends. I did this for about three years, sourcing a new supplier, reaching out, waiting to hear back, we reached out to probably about a dozen skincare brands, large and small, in hopes of collaborating on the experiment in exchange for some promo. This resulted in a whole lot of ghosting. Fair. Four years have passed. Dozens of leads have fallen flat, but I was not giving up. In fact, 
I was more determined than ever. We would have to go to the institutions ourselves. And production manager Marlena had one final lead, her alma mater, London College of Fashion, which it transpired had a whole cosmetic science department. And they said yes. Hi. Hi! Welcome to our lab. This is my dream come true. This is like the day I've waited my whole life for. <laughs> I'm Rosie. I'm a recent graduate of the master's degree in cosmetic science at London College of Fashion. So we've come into your lab because you have the materials and the safety qualifications to be able to test out the Victorian slash Edwardian depilatory recipe of our dreams. Is that something that we can do here? Yes. Of course. But we've also got a modern recipe that we can make to compare it to. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we can see how effective the 19th century depilatories are along with our modern expectations of depilatories. Yeah, exactly. As well as which are more irritating, what the difference in ingredients are. Yeah, the process. Yeah. So what is the science behind what is actually going on here? What is happening to the hair follicles? So hair contains keratin, which is basically held together by disulfide bonds. That is what gives hair its strength and its shape. Our active is basically calcium thioglycolic trihydrate. The thio in the name means sulfur containing. Products like this target those disulfide bonds and break them. So basically, once those disulfide bonds are broken, the hair will become so weak that you can either sort of tear it apart, or if it's on the arms, you scrape it off and it will just easily come off because it's so weak. Right, right. So, so that's what they say in the recipe of scraping it off with a blunt knife, yeah. is that then the hair just, it, because it's so shattered, it just, you just yeah. dust that off yeah. and be done with it. Yeah, pretty much. So the first ingredient is cornstarch, cool. which is basically just like a carrier of the powder. Yeah. So I'm going to pop that in first. Does it thicken as well? Is that? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you add the water, it will have that like nice yeah. sort of yeah. feel. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add the zinc oxide next. Cool, cool. This, I was reading up about it, it is another sort of carrier powder for it, but apparently it also has some soothing benefits. Yeah, I read it was like antibacterial, yeah. and it's oh. also used in like ointments for yeah. rashes and stuff. We were trying to debate how many of these you would be able to just go to your local chemist and buy. Like, would yeah. you just be able to go to your chemist and say, hey, I need a, I need 10 drams of strontium sulfide, and maybe like, <laughs> literally say less. <laughs> So this is our active, the strontium sulfide. The it's gold, pink. the precious, <laughs> the magical ingredient. There she is. Yeah, oh, it's so beautiful. Pretty. Wow. So much time and effort. <laughs> so little powder. <laughs> this tiny little bottle. It is amazing that they don't have us put any scent in this. A lot of the Victorian recipes are like almond scent and rose water and citrus. Yeah. This is like no. I'm not we even sure if it would overpower it because the smell is of this oh, like really? crazy. Once you add the water, just all smells ah, very sulfury. Mm. Like oh yes, eggs. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so literally all that you need to do is wow. sort of crush it up. That sweet strontium sulfide ASMR. <laughs> so there's the finished product of that. Let me pop this over here. So now onto the modern one. Does it do anything different than something like that would? Or is it just like less dangerous? I mean, less sort of like irritating. Okay. This is in an emulsion. So it okay. has like soothing ingredients. So you're oh, not nice. just like putting you're active onto your skin. Got it. So we're gonna start with the water phase. So firstly, water. We've got 70.5 grams of this. Yeah, the precision is definitely something that is immediately different. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going in with the calcium thioglycolate. Mm. This is pretty much our active in this. Okay. We're just gonna stir this in, so it's just a little magnetic bead. 
Yeah, your local Victorian apothecary is not doing this. <laughs> We're going to add some glycerin. The glycerin is what helps the calcium hydroxide to dissolve. Yeah, I, I'm starting to see why ingredients and ingredients and ingredients. Like now you need this one to solve this problem and now if we want this thing we have to solve it with three more different yeah. things. Yeah, it's kind of addictive. I feel like once you start to learn about it, you can't not mm. read the back of a product. So we'll just get that stirring. Do you ever bring your tea in here and do that? No, but that's such a good idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, especially with honey that separates. Oh, just keep it stirring. It heats <laughs> up as well. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is we've just made a strontium sulfide tea. Yes, exactly. But we're just not going to drink it. It's tea for your skin. OK. Yeah, I guess. OK. To take your hair away. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an emulsifier which is going to allow a water and oil to combine into a beautiful cream. This is also like a wax base. Ooh. Oh, they're so cute. Right? Cool, we're just going to pop that on the hot plate to melt. Ooh. And we're going to start heating this one as well. So you basically just want to get them to the same temperature. Okay. So then when you add the water phase into the oil, we can homogenize it and it will just go together nicely. Wow, yeah. it's so neat and efficient. Okay, so now phase A goes into phase B. So it's basically like high shear mixing because obviously water and oil don't mix, you need that like real strong power. Yeah. We're just going to pop it onto the overhead stirrer while it cools. Okay. Just going to thicken up a little bit now. Okay, so it's ready. Oh, it does look like, like whipped cream. It's like a meringue. Yeah. Oh my God, we're on Bake Off, you're right. <laughs> you just have to lick the spoon. <laughs> And now we get to test the fruits of our labors, mostly Ooh. your labor. <laughs> so here we've got the modern formula and here we have the Edwardian formula. Literally just pop a little bit of this powder into here. Okay, I'll just do like a yeah, heaping. Maybe even chuck a little bit more Okay, in. more than that. Might as well. Two heaping stainless steel shovels full. <laughs> and then I would say just a few drops of water, maybe like one to one. Oh yeah, it does. Oh my God, it turns right into a little paste. <laughs> yeah, it definitely smells like sulfur. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, yeah, it's, it's getting more and more pungent. So basically, oh my God. just grab, I would say maybe use this, get a bunch of it on there, okay. and then just do like a little, okay, so that we can like pull it apart. Yeah, 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 on your marks. <laughs> get set, go! <laughs> It is harder with the powder because it's so thick and even though like it's yeah. quite liquidy in there, it dries super fast. Yeah, it really yeah. does. Okay, so we do really want to just like paste just, it. Yeah. yeah. Whack it on there. <laughs> Maybe this is why they don't put any scent in it because like it doesn't matter at this yeah. point. You're going to smell like <laughs> eggs or you're going to smell like rose eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like rose eggs might be worse. <laughs> Do you want to do the honours? Okay, let's see if this has done anything. Yeah, literally just pull it apart. Yeah, that is some crunchy hair. <laughs> <laughs> so that presumably is, oh wow. Yeah, it's just, it just dissolves. So this would be your arm hair, presumably, that would just kind of crumble off yeah. into nothing and then you just wipe it off. So it worked. It's weird, isn't it? It's almost yeah. like chewing gummy. Yeah. I'm assuming the modern one will also work as well. Ooh, <laughs> pasty. <laughs> Am I just weak? You could always try pulling just some of like the top oh, layer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they both work. Well, this one just smells a lot less bad. Yeah. 
<laughs> wow, it's just fried. Yeah. Because that one sort of came apart Yeah, really this nicely. came apart really easily. Yeah. I wonder if we just left it longer. Because once I did it in sections, it was fine. Yeah. That is Very some nasty hair. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Was it everything you dreamed it would be buried at? I'd still like to touch them. <laughs> London College of Fashion is not responsible for my irresponsible behavior. It's very um, powdery, but it dries quickly. <laughs> this one is um, feeling a little bit prickly. <laughs> not in a bad way, just in like a normal depilatory way. Is that the, the new or the old? The um, Victorian one. It definitely feels stronger. So shall we rinse you off? Yeah, you're like, you please. Get, you're going to get depilated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked. So I think we've concluded that the Victorian one is really effective. So in a way, the modern product is safer. Yes. Because <laughs> it doesn't act as quickly. So you can yes. get distracted for two minutes. Yes. That you'll be fine. You can really see it. Oh, Not yeah. really, but... But there's a little yeah, bit here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was you just a very it. small amount, but it did work. Yeah. Yay! That would be the formulator. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. That was no very worries. entertaining. <laughs> it's been a month since we filmed the lab portion, and as you can see, I still very much have a bald spot. So, some powerful stuff. A mere minute on my skin was enough to completely depilatize all hairs from the small patch on my arm, far less than the recommended 10 to 15 minutes by modern depilatories. The modern depilatory, meanwhile, had no effect in this short of a time. So while the Edwardian recipe seems on the surface to be the more effective product, there's a very good reason why modern products aren't as powerful. Aside from the lower risk of severe skin burns from milder caustics, there is a much greater window of safety in allowing more time for the product to take effect. Both recipes work, but the modern one is going to do so at a much slower and safer pace than the trial by fire that the Edwardian recipe is. And perhaps that's by design. A huge thank you to London College of Fashion's Cosmetic Science Department for collaborating with us on this project and providing their invaluable expertise on the science behind this. Truly, you have made a five-year-long dream come true. We love London College of Fashion. We love their Cosmetic Science Department in this establishment. Go check out that program. It's um, criminally under-known and underrated. All shenanigans in this video are committed by um, us taking responsibility for our own stupidity. This video has been brought to you by us, our patrons. We could not have spent five years trying to make this video happen, paying all the wonderful people at London College of Fashion for their amazing expertise. If you like this content and want to support more of this happening, do feel free to head over to Patreon and support us over there. We've got some really exciting things that we're cooking up, namely, patterns. This has been a long-standing dream of mine to start putting out patterns in a range of different sizes of all the projects that I have done on this channel for you guys to have access to making them up for yourself. So this is a project that is going to very much be tested and offered to patrons first before it becomes available to the rest of you and if you would like to be part of that do feel free to head over, link in the description. I also put out a monthly video update just to chat with you about what's going on behind this channel. You can get 16 straight minutes of guinea pig content. I don't know what else you want, honestly.